Hello and welcome to the Rock and Road to Success. Gabe here, and today I'm going to do one totally, totally unscripted video because I know one of the main things that I see as a problem or that I have seen, seen people saying that was a problem for them as an introvert or as someone a bit more shy, maybe, is public speaking. And one of the great things about public speaking, or better yet, one of the main difficulties we may face when trying to speak publicly, to speak, be it in video form, be it at an event, whatever it is, when you are on the line, one of the most difficult things I see, especially for people who are more in the introverted side or who are a bit more of a perfectionist, because they always want to get every little detail, right? is improvising or better saying, what if they ask me something that I don't know the answer to? Or what if I need to talk about a subject that I'm not so familiar about or that I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not so familiar. I'm not so certain of what I'm saying. How can I talk in a way that can be perceived in a good manner? It doesn't have to be the best of the best, but at least that I don't, go full blank and you stay with that face like you know when someone says hey could you give give a speech for the groom and the bride and in an event like that and then the guy is like can't believe I'll have to say something I don't have anything prepared and to be honest people don't expect you to say great things. Really, if you do say something great, it will be very, like people will be like, wow, congratulations, man. But anyways, I, I'm mumbling a bit in this introduction, but what I wanted to show you guys is some, some ways that you can train. So first of all, I'll prove to you guys that I have nothing on my desk. So I'm totally improvising from the get-go. Like these are closed. And e even my screen, look how we're breaking the fourth wall, baby. So even on my screen, I have nothing. I have nothing to hide. And that's the thing. If you read it over there, this video is completely unscripted because I want to show you guys how it's done show you guys that it's possible, especially, and give you some tips in improvising overall. So for instance, I have my guitar here, my acoustic guitar. And when we think of the guitar heroes, guys like a Slash, guys like an Eddie Van Halen, Santana, all of those guys that are amazing, Jimi Hendrix, all of those guys, anyway, the one you're thinking about, that one. So when we think about these guys and we think about their solos and how they improvise, we tend to think that they're geniuses. And in a way, they are. Like I fully respect all of them. But they're not completely improvising, actually. It's kind of improvising, but it's also kind of isn't. Because when you're learning to play a guitar or any instrument or any skill, actually, what you do is learn bits and pieces and you practice a lot. You practice and practice and practice and you get all of those bits and pieces gelled together or glued together in the best way possible, but you're practicing them. So for instance, the guitar players, they practice scales for hours and hours and hours and hours on end for years to get to that level. So they know the scales by heart and they know they've practiced also the picking pattern. They practicing, they're practicing pull, uh, pull offs and hammer ons. They're practicing every single bit and piece. They've practiced hundreds of thousands, millions of times. So when the time comes to improvise in a song or improvise live, especially they've already done this thousands of times before so it's not of course they are improvising in the sense that they're not doing this according to the script but in the sense that 
they've never done that before, that's not true at all. They've done it before hundreds, thousands of times. And even the solos that they do play on a show, sorry to break out to you, but even those solos, they actually already practice similar solos many times. So it's not completely improvised as well. But the good thing for you is that you can use that same thing, that same bells and whistles, that same uh, smokes and mirrors kind of thing to improvise in your social gatherings, in your social situations. So in a meeting or in when you're talking to a client or if you have a birthday or a wedding and someone needs to give a speech, you will be able to do it because you know that it's just giving a speech is basically putting a bunch of words together. And you already know how to put a bunch of words together. You do this once in a while when you're talking to your friend or you're talking to your girlfriend, your parents. So you can do it. You just need to focus a little bit. You just need to practice it a little bit, but you can do it for sure. So the exercise that I want to show you and I want to encourage you guys to practice and try, and I'm going to do it right now, is basically you take, you get some random topic. So you may take it from maybe if you're looking through social media, you can take like, I'll take the topic of the fifth post that I see scrolling over here and I'll talk about that. Yeah, maybe I, sh I should have thought about it differently and done that for this video, but I have another idea anyways. So you can think about that and then you challenge yourself to, to speak for one minute about that topic. And then you can go progressively from there, one minute and a half, two minutes, three minutes. And uh, I just noticed that I don't have my cell phone to, to use it as a prop. So I'll, I'll just get it one second. I'm back. And really, I'm not even gonna cut this part because I want you guys to know that I'm really not cheating because that would be ridiculous. So I only got the phone to use the timer. So I'll put a timer for three minutes, but not right now. Like, so to get the topic, the random topic, I'll get one of those books without looking at them. And then I'll open a random page and like read a sentence and I'll show it to you guys. And then I'll, I'll speak three minutes about that topic, whatever it is. Okay. So just to show you guys that it's possible and it's actually pretty easy and you guys can practice this without recording. You can practice the alone. So no one will see you speaking differently than me because everyone can see me on this so i'm not gonna look just getting a book. random book oh this is a good one so i ended up getting chris voss's um how's the original title of this Oh, never split the difference. So if anyone, if, if you haven't heard of this book, you should definitely read it or check out Chris's videos because he's an ex-FBI negotiation specialist and he has very interesting ideas about negotiation and a lot of tips. So I definitely recommend. So let's open a random page and yeah. Actually, I got this, this paragraph isn't really cool because it's like in the beginning of my career as a negotiator, uh, as a hostage negotiator, I learned how important it was to talk directly. I don't know, to, to deal directly with the negative dynamic without fear, but with deference. So let's say, let's talk about hostage negotiation. 
I'll put myself on the spot and talk about hostage negotiation because that was the best I could extract from that excerpt. So I'll put here the, the three minutes, 2.59 to be accurate. And let's start. So, you know, hostage negotiation is one of the most important jobs in the FBI and in any intelligence agency. When the push comes to shove and people have all of their emotions at the highest level, the adrenaline is so high, the tension is so great that you can, you can cut through it with a knife. And the bank is full of hostages. The guy on the telephone says that he's going to shoot someone if you don't say the right things. And the right things in this case are things that you can't say because he's asking you for money. He's asking you for a getaway car. He's asking you that he wants to become the president of your country. And if you don't give it to him, he'll end the hostages lives. And what do you do when you're put on the spot? Do you give away to what they're asking you to do? Can you be strong? Do you have the will, the guts at that dearest of times, that dreariest of times? It's not easy. And I bet that most people would fail. Most people could never be a hostage negotiator even if they wanted to, even if they think they have what it takes, they don't. Because to be a hostage negotiator, not only do you have to have nerves of steel, you also need to be able to listen, to truly listen to what the other person on the line is saying and to hear the little cues of what they actually want. Because one thing is what the person says they want. The other thing, the important thing, is what is left unsaid. What people say they want and what people really want, especially in a complicated negotiation, are completely different things. So if you want to go into this line of work, of being a hostage negotiator, of going into an intelligence agency such as the MI6, the CIA, the FBI, you need to know that you need to have these guts. You need to have the nerves of steel and you simply can't cave in. But at the same time, you can't be a robot. You need to focus and listen very clearly, very dearly to what they're saying. So in the case of this book, ha, saved by the bell, huh? And you can see that I was pretty much changing subjects at the same time that this ended up, um, the bell rang. So when you practice this, you end up having kind of like an inner timer in your mind. So you kind of know. So if I said one minute, I kind of know how long it takes. If I said two minutes, if I said three minutes, you kind of know how long it'll take for the bell to ring. So you already kind of condition yourself. You kind of use the cadence of what you're saying in a way so that you can fill in the gaps and that you can fill in the space. And usually in cases in real life situations, you actually don't even need to speak for three minutes. You can speak for one minute for 20 seconds at times and it will be good enough. So if you practice and this is a very important thing as well. Deliberate practice and practicing in a way that's harder when you train or when you practice than it is when you come to the real deal. If you practice, if your practice is harder than the real deal, when the push comes to shove, when the real deal comes, it will be super easy. So if you're used to improvising for one hour and someone asks you to speak for two minutes, it will be a piece of cake. It will actually be hard because you will think it's too little time. You'll be like, 
I can't say anything in two minutes because you're so used to it. And I used to have this problem a lot that sometimes I didn't know how to improvise or, you know, when you need to do some small talk, you need to speak a little bit. You don't really want to say anything, but you kind of have to. So by practicing this, by practicing improvisation, you can improve as well when you're doing some small talk. So you might ask them about, and actually, to be fair, doing a small talk is also one very important skill that you should have in your arsenal anyways. But the gist of this video was to do an, a totally unscripted video to show you guys that it can be done and to show you guys this exercise of improvising and getting a random topic and speaking about it for one minute, then for two minutes, for three minutes. And it, it's like going to the gym. So the first time you go to the gym, you get those little colored weights that like only the grandmas use because you're so weak. But then little by little, you get a bit stronger and then you get those regular size weights that they're, they're not super colorful. They're not the granny weights and eventually if you keep practicing you will get strong and you will actually be strong you will be a strong girl a strong guy and that's the thing practice 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 especially deliberate practice so going back to the guitar heroes deliberate practice is about practicing the details that you will have to use so in their case it was picking patterns, it was scales, it was hammer-ons and pull-offs. And in your case, well, if it's about speaking, you can practice with your tone, you can practice improvisation, you can practice pauses. There are many things that you can practice. And try to focus at one aspect at a time. So don't try to do everything at once because that ends up with you not really nailing down anything so nail down each aspect think about the fundamentals so like in basketball for example when the players are up and coming they need to train the fundamentals so they need to train their jump shot they need to train their free throws they need to train the free pointer the defense and even the defense it's all about foot coordination it's all about where you put your hand the angle so they're very there are a bunch of details that you'll have to think about. But try to think about one or two at a time and practice deliberately. Practice harder than you'll have in the real deal. And you'll be golden. So thank you for watching. Keep rocking. Keep rolling. You already are a rock star. You just need to unleash it.